All right, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Monday, January 9th, 2023. If you've not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, into it. First full week of the trading year here. Um, and a very interesting day. So market started off with a little kind of gap and go. Um, and there was an order sitting on the book map. I saw a 39.25, and that was sitting there all day long. I thought it was going to get filled this morning um, right off the the, uh, the open. And it was basically right near gap fill on the spider. So right around, it's actually at about the high of this candle. So about 388.50, um, right in that area of the 39.25. I thought that was going to get filled, and we just drove away from it. And uh, I even mentioned on Twitter, and I said to my members today, I was like, this is a little... Uh, unhealthy. I prefer the market to pull back uh, ahead of Powell tomorrow and, uh, of course, CPI on Thursday. And it's kind of setting up for a sell the news. I actually, believe it or not, this is one of the instances um, where we had, an, I mean, this is a pretty good fade here um, in the afternoon. I will actually say, though, that this is one of those instances where we had a gap and go that faded. Oh, this is actually not bearish price action. Um, this is actually what you want to see as a bull. Um, the last thing you'd want to see going into Powell tomorrow is the market closing up at the highs at 394 right now, or up into this uh, gap window where there's a ton of resistance and a ton of bulls trapped. That's not what you'd want because then we would most likely sell off of no matter what Powell says tomorrow because um, essentially they'd be, they'd be pricing in the biggest dovish Powell there is, right? So he'd have to say something really dovish to justify those prices. We're fading ahead of that. And why this isn't bearish here? A um, couple of reasons, big reasons. One thing, you can look at it right there. I um, already see it. What was the volume like on Friday? 100, 100 million shares. We had a monster move on that, a powerhouse move. Today, we're still green and we're up, you know, we're trading 58 million shares here at 3.43 p.m. This is not sell volume. This is not heavy sell volume uh, that shorts need for, you know, to push the market lower. There's nobody really trading this. It's just retail and algos. Um, this is not institutional uh, positioning. Another reason triple Qs are leading. So the NASDAQ is leading. Now you might say, well, this is not a great looking candle here. That's okay. Um, it's still up 85 basis points with the spiders flat. So NASDAQ leading the charge to the upside. Another leading indicator that we love here at Carnivore Trades, the semiconductor is my favorite, uh, up 2.63% and still has a nice bullish structure here intraday. Um, still holding that 10 minute 50 moving average there. So it's holding up well. I love to see the semiconductors leading. Let's look at the Dow transports as well. Uh, DJT. So that is about back above the 200-day moving average. And again, intraday, you know, a little pullback here. It's just below that 10-minute 50 MA, but this is holding most of the gains uh, for the day. I like to see the transports leading. I like to see the semis leading. I actually like cloud here. Um, this is actually holding up a little bit better here too. This might be the next sector to get kind of a bounce of January effect uh, type play here. Um, but when I see the, and, and most of the fade job, honestly, it's a lot of it's from Apple here. Apple's faded a lot of it. Google's come off the highs here a little bit. Um, I know XLV is under some pressure today, but really the, the broad market, as we know, is tech. And for the most part, tech is holding up. When I see the NASDAQ leading on an up day, um, generally, I'm going to give the market the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, really all we kind of did here is come down and back test this, uh, this channel here. And we're basically just into that right now. To me, honestly, the volume being light and the fact that tech is, is leading the charge to the upside. There's a lot of tech stocks on my screen that are holding up really well. Um, some kind of like some of the mid cap kind of players. Um, you know, just the, the, the Roku's having a nice day, for instance. Uh, Zoom was having a nice day, you know, backed off the highs a little bit here. But um, this is not a terrible tape, if you ask me. And, and honestly, um, as a bear, I would actually be nervous that, we, that we're selling off right now ahead of Powell. Um, another thing, take a look at Vol. So Vixie up 1.21% here. And the VIX has been green all day, up 35 now. This, to me, is just hedging ahead of Powell. Um, it's just put protection, essentially. If he doesn't say anything wildly bearish, we could get a serious vol crush tomorrow. So that's a possible setup here as well. Um, and honestly, just beyond that, you know, that was a power move Friday. We got a little overbought on an intraday basis, you know, the hourly, um, you know, I mean, we choose one, two, three, four, five, six, one pause candle, seven, eight. So eight or, you know, nine. Eight out, eight out of nine hourly candles there just surging to the upside, 380 to 394 in 
basically what nine hours in, in trading time of course the market's got to pull back right so you know this the market is you know market was a little short-term overbought i think it just needs to cool off here and if i was a bull i would rather have it cooling off now ahead of powell than having to do it while we're up into powell because that actually sets you up for a sell-off that could cascade but this is a failed bear pattern uh last week failed inside bar and that usually will give you a pretty good upside bias here. Now, again, we're pulling back. I wouldn't make too much out of it, honestly. Um, they're painting the tape to look bearish, to give it a bearish feel, if you ask me. Um, and again, the NASDAQ is leading, so we have to respect that moving forward. Anyways, um, so Qs, I still think they want... I still think they want to go up to that 280 handle. I mean, again, we basically kissed that 50 moving average we did fill this gap here i still think they get up to the 280 level um, and then on the weekly that's going to basically coincide with the 220 moving average there on the weekly i think that's really kind of your likely upside here um, for this week maybe it can get a little bit higher um, i can't rule that out but the nasdaq has been weak here but now it's starting to get a bounce and i think like i said uh late last year that the nasdaq is going to be the, the the index that's going to be able to outperform uh the rest of the market here in january as that it is the most oversold one, but um, those are the levels there I'm watching on the queues. Um, Russell basically just hanging onto the flat line right now, went up into the 150 moving average and again, backed off just a little overbought like everything else. And the Dow has actually been red um, pretty much, well, not all day, but it's been red much more of the day here. You can see it turned red a lot sooner than everything else. And again, the Dow lagging is not really a bad thing. So as long as the NASDAQ is leading, semiconductors are leading, um, I'm going to find it hard to get too bearish on this market. It's really, to me, it feels like they're just really trying to juice up uh, put buyers, honestly, uh, going into tomorrow. So anyways, uh, SMH, again, we talked about that. Uh, we got above that 208 level, but head and shoulders above it. And then we had a gap above this previous resistance level and then went up into the 200 days. So the semis are strong. So when the semis are holding up, uh, definitely respect that. We went up into the 200, the gap window there. We backed off of that, but this is a sign of strength here, up 2.37% on the day as the market is basically negative now. Um, that's a divergence, if you ask me. So semis are telling us something here. Do not ignore them. IGV up 2% as well. That's performing well. So IGV and SMH both confirming uh, some strength here while you're seeing kind of, you know, XLF, which we'll talk about in a minute, XLV kind of take the market down. XLE is down as well. Um, and again, tech showing leadership. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm never going to say that's bearish here. So anyways, uh, over to the transports. Again, we mentioned those a minute ago, back above the 200 moving average. You know, let's say we got 10 minutes left. So it looks like it's going to, yeah, it should be able to hold that by the end of the day unless they really knock it down here. Um, but either way, a nice move there above the 50 moving average. And again, like we said last week or so, big picture, meaning in the next couple of weeks, that failed inside bar is bearish on the weekly. But for now, it, transports are actually leading the market higher. So in the near term, we're giving the market still an upside bias here. But um, we have to be careful because I think the next move is around the corner here. But I don't think we're quite there yet. All right, over to XHB Home Builders. This is still managing to scratch out again. ITB is just negative there, down eight cents. Um, very close to double top right now. I think this one still can go a little bit higher, possibly even into the 66 handle. Um, but for right now, basically just backing off a little bit for the day. VNQ, kind of a nothing burger, um, up just three pennies right now. That is hanging in there, but this is really not a pattern of strength, uh, if you ask me. Uh, XLF, again, it got above that trend line yesterday and then just kind of backing off here today. Again, going up into that that uh, reversal bar. So lots of resistance there. No, no surprise, it does have to pull back. If this can flag, it can push higher. Um, but for right now, nothing terrible on XLF, but it is backing off. Broker dealers are actually up decently though. So up 90, 91 basis points right now, back above the 50 moving average, and you're gonna get a daily close. Well, we had a daily close and weekly close above that red bar. And now we're just into this one here. And so you can see that's where we're backing off now, but this isn't a terrible pattern here. And intraday, XBD is holding up as well. Um, you know, just kind of like the semis here, up move, and then just kind of sideways to negative pullback pattern. So this looks healthy to me as well. Over to energy, so crude up 1.4. You know, nothing great here. You could make a case you're starting to put in inside bar bear flag. So be careful of that. That would certainly would fit the thesis that I have. That crude does need to make a move lower. Um, if it can reverse that, then again, we're obviously 
scouting for an inverse head and shoulders, but we're not playing this until it triggers. So if it triggers, then we can play it, but don't assume that it's going to play out right now. Uh, a lot of people get burned because they assume that a right shoulder will be formed and then they, they're ultimately never is one or it goes sideways and then you bear flag and then you go down. So um, don't jump out in front of that thinking that it's going to be a pattern. Um, let it actually trigger first. Uh, but yes, crude um, under a little bit of pressure, watch that daily inside bar. XLE negative, just can't get above this white trend line here um, or the 50 moving average. So again, backing off of that 89 handle. And, you know, it's basically flat to lower for the for the day here. Um, XOP is green and OIH just doesn't really care. It's <laughs> OIH is just up 2.5% uh, here. Looks like it's just going to get above. So this high, uh, high here is 313.16. So it's flirting with that right now. A close above that would be a really major sign of strength um i told you guys this over the weekend i do like this pattern here on the uh on the weekly and the monthly for oih that's a really good monthly inside bar i still think it has to do i still think it has to go down to 250 at some point but the good news is you could still maintain that inside bar with a 250 test so um Short term, I, I mean, this continues to defy gravity. Medium term, I think this still has to do more backing and filling. I do not think it's ready to break out yet. Um, but hey, it's showing it's showing lots of strength here. And I do like that bigger time frame there for OIH. Net gas coming off the lows up five and a half, although it's backing off a little bit here. I still think this one gets up to four five. Then it works its way up to 475, maybe 485, possibly $5. You have that 20 moving average down sloping, which could also be an upside target there as well. Um, depends what price would look like, obviously, once it gets there because it is down sloping. But um, this little bounce there for Natty, I do think that has put in some type of a bottom here. And then the dollar index breaking lower here. Here's another reason why um, you might want, not want to get too bearish here. So the dollar coming in pretty sharply. Um, markets right now are diverging from that. And this really kind of... Um, I think gives weight to the thesis that I, what I was saying earlier, that this is just vol put protection buying. Um, so they're basically hedging ahead of Powell. You know, as soon as he starts talking, if he doesn't say anything crazy, you, you could get a vol crush. And that's why I'm saying that that could be a setup for tomorrow um, because the dollar is getting hit and the markets are starting to fade here as you see put protection being bought. Notice how the VIX was, low, you know, getting beat up all day and then it started to bottom and you just see put buyers come in. Well, it's not like the dollar was getting a bid. The dollar has been down all day long. So, um, again, I think this is just put put buying for Powell tomorrow. So nothing really, anything more to make out of it than that. There's very light volume here today, and the NASDAQ is leading. I can't get too bearish. Anyways, over to gold. Um, so gold managing to scratch out a little bit of a gain. Um, again, it's looking a little top heavy. Could it overshoot a little bit and go a little higher? I can't rule it out, but right now, ask yourself, even if somehow it does overshoot to 1925, which is, you know, basically where this trend line is, um, you know, look at your risk reward here. I mean, bare minimum, uh, a correction would probably take you down to what, 1730. And so you're going to look at 50 points of upside for, you know, over 150, yeah, about 150 points of downside potentially. So I don't like gold here um, for, for a long standpoint. Um, just risk reward is not good. And I think we're going to get a better buying opportunity on gold um, possibly soon this year. So we'll see what we get. Um, but I am not in love with gold at the moment, although it's holding up well. Um, silver here backing off as well, down 84 basis points. Again, I do not like the pattern. I think this is also very top heavy. So be careful with that. Platinum backing off a little bit as well. Down 1.2% after that pig pop on Friday. Um, platinum continues to be a strong metal. And then copper here, nice pop. Um, now we have to see. So it is above 396, but it's got to hold. It's got five, you know, four whole more days to really hold this level or fade this level potentially by Friday. So if you can close above 396 by Friday's close, that's a, you know, this inside bar will play out and you'll negate this red bar, which sends copper going much higher. Um, that would probably look to buy the next dip on copper, honestly, uh, if that were to happen. So um, I do like copper here, but it has to get above that 396 level on a Friday close. Bitcoin here um, up decently, so up 1.72, although it backed off pretty sharp, pretty sharply with everything else here. I mean, just can't sustain a bid. Um, and yeah, just stuck at that 50 moving average there on the daily. It's holding up okay. You know, maybe it can get a higher low in at some point. Um, but it does look like the market, they are just buying a lot of puts here um, to try and push this market down. And uh, it looks honestly to me mostly like hedging. Um, I, I really, 
normally I would say, you know, like I said earlier, um, normally uh, uh, this type of price action would get me pretty bearish, but considering what I'm seeing here from tech and what I just showed you guys with the dollar there, um, it, it really feels kind of like a contrived move to me. There's not a lot of volume here. Tech's still showing leadership, leadership semis are still up. Cloud is still up nicely. Transports are still holding up well. Um, so that gives me still an upside bias here um, going into this week. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. Talk to you guys all tomorrow.